Make sure the belt is centered in relation to the band tension unit and sanding drum. If the sanding belt will not center, some adjustments need to be made. In order to move the belt towards the machine side A, turn the adjustment screw counterclockwise. In order to move the belt towards the machine side B, turn the adjustment screw clockwise. If the sanding belt is still not centered, then do the following. Fit a fine sanding paper, P100 to 120. Turn the fine adjustment screw counterclockwise until it reaches the top. Start the machine. Remove the plastic plug that protects the coarse adjustment screw and insert a screwdriver into the hole in the machine chassis. Turn the coarse adjustment screw counterclockwise so the abrasive belt moves towards the inside of the edge guide, the machine side B. Then turn the screw a further quarter of a turn. Use the fine adjustment screw as described above to adjust the sanding belt so that it only lightly touches against the guide edge, the machine side A. When properly adjusted, the sanding drum sands evenly over the whole width of the drum. Check whether the entire drum is in contact with the floor. If not, do as follows. Loosen the locking nut on the threaded rod. Turn the domed nut clockwise so that the drum sands more on side A. Turn the domed nut counterclockwise so that the drum sands more on side B. Fix the new level by tightening the locking nut. For best results, set the drum pressure knob in accordance with the sandpaper grit size and adjust the speed. Lowest position means high pressure and coarse abrasive grits, and highest means low pressure and fine abrasive grits. Cutter marks. The most common causes of cutter marks may be a floor with some give, dirt on the wheels, or damage to the drum or fan blades. Clean, scrape off the coating, and vacuum clean. To check and clean the drum and tensioning device, do as follows. Before you pull out the existing belt, insert the drifting tool until it bottoms in the hole. Press the tool straight down until the mechanism locks in its bottom position. Check for rips and other damage on the sanding drum. Lock the drum by inserting a rod into the hole in the chassis. Remove the nut and washer and replace them with the drum tool. Use a hammer with metal head and give the tool a hard hit at the end. The drum should now come loose. If not, hit it again, hard. Loosen the three bolts and lift, lower and pull out the tensioning device. Clean the drum and check for damage or wear. Take out the fan by removing the three bolts. Thoroughly check that there is no damage to the fan blades. If the fan belt needs adjusting, the motor mounting can be loosened and pushed into the desired position. Fix the new position by screwing the motor mounting firmly into place.
check the carbon brushes regularly. The brushes wear more at higher loads and should be changed in pairs after approximately 100 hours of normal operation. Open the outer door with a coin, for example. The brushes have an automatic stop and cannot be worn down below the mark. Remove the four belt cover screws. Loosen the four bolts on the motor bracket. Lift the motor from the motor bracket and sanding arm. Remove the screw and washer and the stop screw and cover plate that secures the fan. Fit the new drive belt on the small pulley. The pulley, fan, along with the cover plate are pushed onto the motor shaft. Ensure that the cover plate is loose and tighten the screw. Fit the belt onto the large pulley. Press the pulleys back onto the motor bracket. Check that the belt and fan run freely by rotating them. Mount the screws in reverse order. Tighten the belt. Keep it tight while you tighten the bolts. Remove the four screws on top of the sanding arm. Use the tool to push down the sanding disc assembly. Remove the two covers on the bottom of the arm. Change the belt and place the new one first on the big pulley, then on the smaller. Before you place the disc assembly in position, align it by letting the tool guide the holes so that they match each other. Then slip the disc assembly in place. Check that the disc moves freely. Fine align the holes. Put the screws back in place and tighten. To be able to install the small cover, you need to remove the abrasive disc and find the two holes in the steel disc and slide in the cover. Put the screws back in place and tighten. Do the same with the other cover. Bona, bringing out the best in wooden floors.